So currently we have two ways for a user to register. Firstly, the user can register themselves through the registration page, but also a admin can create a user in the admin users create endpoint. And at this point, the admin can enter a password for the user. Now, this is fine if it's an internal application and the admin can just pass the password over to the user, but it's not very practical to be sending a plain text password out to a user over the internet, for example, as you're adding a security vulnerability to your application's authentication system with the password being in plain text somewhere in an email or a chat system. So what we're going to implement here is when a new user is created, we're going to send that new user a password reset link. And then this allows the user to click that password reset link and enter a new password of their own that only they know. So there's a quite a few things we need to implement to get this working. The first thing we need to do is set up a test email so we can test this out during development. Then the next thing we need to do is set up Laravel Fortify to handle password resets. And then finally, we need to hook into this new user creation process in the admin panel to fire off that email to the user when the user has been created. So if you've seen my previous videos, you'll probably always see that I like to use MailTrap for my development email. Now you can use this too, but you can use any other service you want, or you can even use a local mail server if you've got one set up. If you're not quite sure, then I recommend you just go along with MailTrap as they have a free account, so it's not gonna cost you anything. And that is over at MailTrap.io. Now once you've logged in, we need to configure our mail server. So under the integrations here, we have a dropdown, and we can come down to PHP Laravel. And then you can see here all the configs that we need to set in the .env file. So if I just copy these now, and then over in our .env file, I'm just gonna come down to the mail part here. I'm just gonna paste those in and then remove the current ones that are in there. Now this sets up our local development environment to send any emails from application and they'll go to MailTrap. And then a final thing we need to do with this config is set a mail from address. Now this could be absolutely anything, it doesn't really matter in development. I'm just gonna do a no reply at test.com. Now, if you're using PHP Artisan Serve like me, since Laravel 8, this should pick up the changes in the AMV file, stop the server and start it again. So if for any reason that it, that has not worked, then simply just stop the server, start it again, and it should pick up this new configuration. So now we have that set up. The next thing we want to do is set up Laravel Fortify to handle the password reset. So as with everything in Laravel Fortify, we need to head over to the Laravel Fortify service provider and let it know where it can find the password reset view. So we're coming under app providers and open up our Fortify service provider. So in a similar style to our login and register views, which we created in earlier videos, we just want to call Fortify. And this time we want to create our reset password view. And then just like above, this takes in a closure. And then that closure simply returns a view. So I'm going to return a view. I'm going to return a view of auth, and I'm going to call this one reset hyphen password. And I've not created this view yet, but I'll be creating that shortly. And then finally, we also want to pass the request down to the view because the way the password reset works in Laravel is it'll create a random token and it'll email that token and a URL back to the user. And then when the user clicks that URL, it's going to come back into our application. It's going to go to this view. And then inside of this view, we need to pick up that token and then pass it over when we do the password reset. So inside of the closure, we're just going to pass in the request. And then we just want to pass this request down to the view so we can pick up that token. So I'm just going to call this request to keep it nice and simple. And then just pass down the request. So this allows us to get that token out of the URL and then use it in the view in the submit form. Okay, so Laravel Fortify now knows where the reset password view is, but we've not created it just yet. The next thing I want to do is when we create the user is send them a password reset email. So over in our user controller in the admin namespace, we want to come down to our store method where we actually create this new user. And at this point, after we created the user and sync their roles, we want to send this user a password reset link. And to do this, we want to call the password facade. And then as always, if your ID doesn't bring the namespaces in automatically, then at the top of your file, 
you want to make sure you use Illuminate support facades password. And then on this password facade, there's a method called send reset link. And this send reset link requires a email that you want to send the email to. So because we've got the request coming in and we've already got the email field there, we're just going to use that. So we can say request. Then we want to say only, and we only want to pass in the email field from the form submission. And that's it. That should be enough to send the email. Let's just actually test this out now. So again, over in the create new user, I'm just going to create a test user out here. So I've just filled this form out to create a test user. And now I'm going to submit this form. And then you can see as normal, this redirects us back to the users list page and it says you have created a user. Now let's check our email in MailTrap. And you can see here we have a new reset password notification. If we just click on this here, and you can see here we have the default Laravel reset password email. And you can see here it has a button and also at the bottom of the mail, it also has a link. And this link goes to forward slash reset hyphen password. But then after that, there's a string of random numbers and letters. And this is the token. This is the token that we need to pick up in our view and then submit it in the form. Now let's just try this link out now. And this should actually redirect us back to the home page. Could we have a user currently logged in? Let's just give it a try a second. Yeah, so could we currently have our user logged in? It's not going to try and show us that view. Let's just log out. And then let's close this tab and then let's try and click this link again. Now this should give us an error because we haven't actually created the view yet, but let's give this a try. And you can see there it's trying to find our auth reset hyphen password view, but obviously we haven't created that yet. So it's just erroring out. So let's create that next. So over in our application, I'm going to come down to resources views and I'm going to open auth. I'm going to copy this register.blade.php file. I'm going to paste this again into the auth folder and I'm going to rename this to reset hyphen password. And I'm just going to change the title to password reset. Now let's give this page a refresh to make sure this is working. You can see that's returning our password reset view now. There's a couple of things we need to change on this first. So the first thing we need to do is change that root. So we want this to go to reset hyphen password. And this is sending a post request. So it's a different route to what the email is. The email is going to a get endpoint, but this is going to go to a post endpoint. We need our CSRF token here. We don't need the name, but we do need to create a hidden input for the token. So I'm just going to create an input here and it's going to be a type of hidden. And I'm going to set the name of this equal to token. And then I'm going to set the value equal to the value from that URL. And if you remember correctly, we pass the request down so we can call request and we can say, get me the token from the request. So let's just save on this and inspect how this is working. So we'll just give this page a refresh oh, and I've made a little bit of an error there. We don't want to go to a root here. We want to go to a URL of reset password. Let's just give this a refresh now. And we can see here now we have our form with the name gone. And if we just right click and inspect and we come up to the form input here, we have a hidden field of token and it's grabbing that string of random text and numbers out of the URL. Well, technically it's getting out the request that we pass back down to the view and it's filling it in here. So we need to pass this over so Laravel can authenticate that this password reset it's coming from somebody who knows what that token is, i.e. the person who the email was sent to. Okay, so the rest of the form is actually okay. So we need to send an email, a password, and a password under the source confirmation field, and then obviously that hidden token. And we already have these in place from our register. So the final thing we probably want to do before we submit this form is make it a little bit easier for the user and populate their email in the email field so they don't have to type it out once they reach this page. Because we're passing the request down, we can just do the same thing we did with getting a token. So if you actually look at the URL, not only is it passing a token down, it's also passing the user's email. So let's just grab that email and populate the form with it. So in the email input, I'm just going to come on to the end here and we have value already. And I'm just going to remove this old value here. Instead, I'm going to 
go into that request that we've passed down and I'm going to grab that email. So let's save on this and refresh the page. And you can see now it's filled in the email automatically for the user. It just makes the user experience a little bit better. So let's put a new password in now for this user. So I'm just going to give this user a password, a password one, because I'm not very inventive or very secure. I'm just going to copy this email so we can log in with this user after we reset the password. Now, all going well, if I hit submit here and this has worked, it should redirect us to the login page. So let's hit submit. And you can see that has now redirected us to the login page. When this works, it also sets a status, a success status, which we probably should show out to the user. So I'll do that next, but let's just try this out now. So I'm just going to log in with that test email and the password was reset to password one. I'm just going to log in. And you can see now I've now reset my password and logged in. So final thing in this video is to display that success message out back to the user once they're redirected to the login page. So they know that the password reset has actually worked. So I'm just going to log out here of this user. And then I'm going to come under the project and I'm going to open up the login.blade.php file. And I'm going to come under the resources views and I'm going to open up the partials alerts.blade.php file. Now the way Laravel 45 passes the messages back is a little bit different to how we've rigged our notification system up here. It simply passes them back as a status. Now in the Laravel 45 terms, if a status is set, it generally means that it's a positive thing, like a success. So let's just add that in here. So we can just do a if, and then like above, we can call that session helper. And we say, if a session of status has been set, I'll just close that off with an end if. And if it is, what we'll do is we'll just copy this success here and save that. So now any alerts coming back from Laravel 45, it's going to check the session to see whether Laravel 45 has set a status. And if it has, it's just going to display it out to the user. And then the final thing we need to do is change this to status. So it's displaying the status message out to the user. So let's try that password reset again. Okay, so to test this out, we actually need to send another password reset email. So I'm just going to log in as an admin user. And then I come over to users. I'm just going to create a new user here. So in a similar sort of vein to the previous one, I'm just creating a test dummy user here. I'm going to click submit on this. And then that's that new user created. So I'm just going to log out here first. So we're logged out the application. Now let's go back over to our mail trap. We see we have our new password reset link here. And we have to do this, by the way, because that unique token here on the first email, once it's been used, Laravel deletes it, so you can't use it again. You can only use it once. That's why we went through this process again. And now we'll have a different token for this password reset. Now let's click this link. Now I'm just going to go through the password reset process again. And I'm going to go with the super secure password one as the new password. And then I'm just going to click submit on this. And you can see that redirects us back to the login page. And it gives us the message that's coming from Laravel 45 saying your password has been reset. So now the user knows that the password is reset and they can just log in with their new password. Now we have a way for users who have been created by admins to create their own passwords. In the next video, let's carry on down this password reset process. Because at the moment, the password reset process only goes out to a new user created by an admin. But what if a user has forgotten their password, for example, and they just want to reset it. They need a process where they can go to a page, click a link to send the password reset, and then go through the password reset flow. So in the next video, we will implement that. And as always, don't forget to give this video a like if you liked it, and also hit that subscribe button, and check out the other series that I have on Laravel on my channel.